Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those who are joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk, where we discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, we're going to continue our intermediate series. Uh, in the last episode, we forged some twist Damascus. Uh, in this episode, we're going to forge that into a knife. At the end, we'll do a little test etch and show you what it looks like. Let's get into it. So I've started out here with the same piece we had from the last time, just with a piece of rebar welded on. Time to just start beating it and flattening it out. Here you can see the importance of a rounding hammer. As I hit the steel, you can see the imprints of the rounding hammer and that's what's spreading it out. If you just hit it with a flat hammer, it'll take forever to flatten this out. When you're trying to draw something out, it's also good to have something below it that's not just flat. Here I'm either using the edge of the anvil or I'm using the horn, which is round, and that's helping me spread the steel out. Here again, I'm using the edge of the anvil to help me spread out the area that's gonna be the tang. There's still really not that much shape to the knife. What I'm trying to do is just get some width. It's still probably about a quarter inch thick at this point. As I'm drawing out the width, I'm making sure I'm keeping the spine pretty straight. I don't want this thing to banana on me. Now I'm slowly working on the profile at the same time as drawing out the width. Here I'm just working on the tip a little bit. I decided I wanted to work on the tang. Unlike the beginner series where I have a long piece of steel and I can work from one end to the other, here I only have so much steel, so I figured I'd better get the tang done to know how big of a blade I'm gonna have. You'll also notice that I'm incorporating the rebar as part of the tang. And I'll talk about this a bit later, but there's absolutely no problem doing this, as long as the union isn't right at the Ricasso. Now I'm hammering the bevels and that's giving me more of the shape that I want. I still have some refinement to do though. Now I'm just working on the overall profile, making sure I've got the flow that I want, going back to the tang, working on that a little bit, and just kind of working on the different pieces all at the same time. Now I'm working on the heel of the knife, just drawing that down to make sure I have it high enough for the blade profile that I want. Here I notice a little crack at the seam of the rebar and the steel, so I'm gonna go weld that, come back, and just hammer it flat. Let's take a moment and talk about tongs. For most of this video, you've seen me use bolt jaw tongs, which are really my favorite tongs because they're pretty versatile and they hold rebar well. But now that I'm onto it being blade shaped, I'm gonna move on to offset tongs that are a little easier to hold a knife with. Now I'm focusing a lot on the tang. I want to make sure I get the right angle 
the right step from the tang, and just all around getting this right. If you don't get this right, it'll just make your life hard in the next few steps. And now just for some final descaling and just some planishing to get it nice and flat. Okay, we got all of the forging complete now. So let's talk about where we're at. So uh, there's some small things I want to change. I probably want to move this up to about here so that this kind of comes down to here. I'll probably soften this a little bit. Um, but otherwise it's pretty close. When we come to the tang, so the tang is a really important part. So first the ricasso. So you want to make sure you don't hammer on this area because that will thin this out. And uh, you'll notice this is thinner, but we want to keep this thick because that's going to be what's against your blade. So you want a constant thickness here. So the ricasso will probably, I don't like big ricassos, so the ricasso will probably end about here. And then we'll transition into our tang. Now, one thing that I see people do a lot, um, which is uh, if, if your knife was here, okay, then they do this with their tang. And they put the tang directly in the center of their knife. Well, one of the really important aspects of the flow of a knife is that the top of the handle flows with the spine. So try to get the top of your handle um, just to flow with the spine. So you don't, want, you don't want your handle here to be lower than the spine. It just looks off. So that's the reason why you want your tang only um, a little bit below this. Okay, because then when your handle goes on, it'll just be, you know, a quarter inch above that. So that's why I tend to put the tangs pretty close to the top and then more space at the bottom. I always have too much tang here. I'm going to cut it off a little bit. So just a note on welding uh, a piece. You'll notice I kept the rebar as part of the, uh, of the tang. Now, there's no problem with um, welding this here. What you don't want to do is weld it here because that's a weak spot but this is going to be in the center of the handle so there's absolutely no problem here and it does not matter if this is mild steel um, typically your tang is going to get softened anyway and you'll see we need to drill a hole here so we're going to end up softening this tang anyway okay so now let's get to putting in our profile we'll grind off the scale and we'll see what our pattern looks like I'm also going to assume you have a more basic grinder that doesn't go horizontal, so I'm not going to use the horizontal feature on my grinder. Now I'm just refining that top false edge and just going around the profile and just smoothing it out and making sure it flows properly. Hey, so we're going to take a little pause here. I got something in the mail that I'm excited about, so let us, let's take a look. Okay, opening it from the middle is not a good idea, but... Alright. Oh, wrong way. Look at that. Maritime Knife Supply. So this is from our sponsor, Lawrence Lake over at Maritime Knife Supply. Uh, very cool. I'm glad you gave me a vertical uh, poster. Thanks, Lawrence. Other thing I'm excited about is my steel order. And the most exciting part of this is that at no cost, you can get your steel cut to length. This saves me hours, folks. So uh, 
Uh, I ordered steel from Lawrence at Maritime Knife Supply, and I just told him in the, in the notes that I wanted four inch pieces. Look at that. So it is ready. All I need to do is grind the mill scale off, and I am ready to go. So really excited about that. So lots of steel here, ready for some uh, upcoming projects. Uh, and this is very nice and flat. It's very cool. Oh, there's another piece. And more. <laughs> ah, and a ruler. I, I never. I, I love having these all over the shop. These little metal rulers. Uh, I use these all the time. So thanks, Lawrence, for including me. He must know me more than I thought he did. Uh, some coffee. Uh, rise and grind. That's awesome. Thank you. Some mugs. Very cool. We'll definitely be using those. A hat. Uh, if you guys don't know, I'm always wearing a hat, so uh, I appreciate that. And... Awesome, and look at that, very cool. So I'll be sticking that uh, to the press or to something else. So some cool swag uh, from our sponsor uh, of Triple T, Maritime Knife Supply. Thank you, Lawrence. So we're back at it, refining the profile. You've heard me talk many times about the flow of the profile, um, and I mean that. I mean take your finger and run it along the, the profile and make sure it feels smooth. Now that I've got the profile where I want it, I'm going to move on to taking the scale off the sides and getting it down to the thickness we need. If you don't have a surface grinder, one of the best ways is to use a magnet like this and just press it up against the platen, and that'll keep it fairly flat. Doing it this way without a surface grinder certainly takes a long time. You got to keep grinding and looking and going back and grinding some more. So I wanted to pause here while I was surface grinding and really just show you guys what's important. Um, so obviously this edge here is the most important from here down to here. So you want this nice and flat, especially this Ricasso piece. It's fine if I have any kind of scale here because when I put the bevel in, obviously that's going to come off with the bevel. I need to look at where is my plunge line going to be. On blades like this, I like to make the plunge line right here on the Ricasso so that the, this rounded part is actually sharp. Okay, so the plunge line, it'll be something like that. So I need this, this part here, that's got to get ground smooth. I see we've got just a little piece on both sides here and here where, if you guys can see that, where it's been um, just a, a piece of the top. So I'm gonna have to grind that out. I'm probably gonna have to bring that down a little bit because I don't think I can grind. I don't want this to be too thin. So I'm just gonna take that down. I'm not really worried about this because when I do the false edge, that's gonna take that out. Uh, and then obviously on this side, I need to get this out. So pretty close, and uh, yeah, and I need to take this side down quite a bit. This is going to be the biggest problem area. I guess I had just a few too many blows here. So um, yeah, I'm going to have to reduce this, which is fine. It'll probably be about an eighth there, which is okay. All right, so just letting you guys know what I'm looking for. Um, when I'm taking this down. I'm not even worried about the tang. I'm just making it the same thickness across. Uh, I do want a slight taper here, so I'll probably 
start to take off more during the tip but when you do the bevel especially if it's a big um, almost full flat grind it's gonna make it's gonna put that bevel in that taper in for you so I'm not really worried about that all right let's go fix up those areas bringing the spine down did fix that little area but that introduces something else that we'll talk about in a little bit Okay, so here it is after uh, surface grinding. Obviously you saw me use the, uh, the grinder with a magnet because I'm simulating I don't have a surface grinder, which of course I do, but for this I was not. Um, so we got it nice and flat. If we take calipers, and this is an important step, take calipers. Okay, we're like 14.3, 13.9, 13.8. So yeah, so pretty good. It tapers pretty good um, at the front, or at least enough. It's a little wider than an eighth. I did manage to, there's just a little schmutz on it, but I did manage to flatten this and get this nice and flat all the way to the Ricasso on both sides, which is where my plunge is going to be. So all this will go away. Let's talk about some other aspects. So I like it where the spine of the knife um, is flat here and then it comes up into this shark fin so that rises up and then it starts your um, where your false edge is going to be and I do like this to be slightly curved I'm probably going to put just a little more curve into it um, just to give it a little more character uh, it just looks nice because when this is ground it's just going to put a nice little fin there which I just think looks cool and goes with my whole shark motif. Some other things about the profile. I like it so that the point of the knife, if that's in frame here, the point of the knife is center line with kind of the middle of the knife here. Not up too high, not down too low, uh, because if you were to stab with this knife, you want the point balanced with where you're pushing. Okay, and you can see it's kind of perfectly balanced in the center. So if you're stabbing something, it's going to be even. Uh, I like my handles to drop a little bit, so that's why you see my cur my tang is kind of dropped. Um, I would recommend for an intermediate series, stay away from curved tangs. That's why I kept this one relatively straight. So as far as width of tangs, how wide do you want this? You want it as wide, pretty much as wide as you can get it while still maintaining the um, thickness of your handle. You want at least, at least an eighth of an inch, preferably more, between the tang and where your handle is going to be. So this one's even a little tight, so I'm probably going to end up grinding this down a little bit uh, so that I have a little more room uh, for handle, because of course I want my handle to end this and since I had to bring this down uh, when I ground that, this out here uh, I'll probably have to bring that tang down just a little bit because my handle is going to be there and that doesn't give me a lot of room a lot of wood here um, to fit my tang so I'll probably end up bringing that down overall though uh, I got the important parts of this let's go give it a test etch so this is my ferric chloride uh, and distilled water mixture. It's about a four to one mixture, but we're going to get into more of that later on in the series when we talk about finishing Damascus. Um, so we're just going to give it a little dip here. And this is just going to take, you know, 15 seconds or so, because I just want to get an idea of what our pattern is going to look like. The reason etching works is because we used steel that has nickel in it and we use high carbon steel without nickel. The nickel will resist the, etch the etching so it should remain silver and then the other steel will be um, will be darker. So let's take a look. Oh very cool. 
If you guys can see that. So we got kind of a tiger stripe motif, which is what I figured, uh, with the low layer, um, the low layer twist. But it looks really cool. And you can see we have some white here. That's just um, where the scale is. You're, you've got some decarburization of the steel, um, which is expected. But when we grind the bevels and that we grind these out, all that will go away and we'll get nice, nice uh, steel. So it looks really cool. So we're going to wrap it up here, folks. Um, but that's what we've got uh, in this episode. I think it's coming along really nice. Next episode, we're going to start doing some grinding. We'll put the false edge in. We'll grind the primary bevel, um, probably heat treat it as well and uh, obviously trim up this tang a little bit. But uh, we'll make sure our proportions are all nice and set up before we heat treat to make sure that um, this is all where we want it. Um, and then we'll do our heat treat and final grind. Thanks folks, we'll see you on the next one.